when I was sitting down there, I was looking at all of you, and um, I work in surgery, so I had to use surgical skills to separate yourself from emotions. Uh, because this is very personal to be here and share my story, what I went through at your age. And um, I ask God to give me strength and courage to do it. So uh, before I start, I want to thank GCS leadership for inviting me. It's, it's an honor and a privilege and to be here and, and share my story uh, about the Matthew 25 challenge you're taking on. Every time I, I share my story, it reminds me how grateful I am um, about something, the best thing ever happened to me in my life. And that best thing ever happened to me in my life is my wife, Kelly. Uh, <clears throat> and my son Jackson and, <clears throat> and Grace. <clears throat> so um, uh, I want them to know that you, you are the best gift God has given me. <clears throat> so the reason why I'm here is to encourage you guys, what you're doing is amazing. You are obeying God's word. You're putting yourself in the shoes of those children that don't have much. They have less. Growing up, I grew up in third world country. It's Burundi. Most of you never heard about it. Burundi is in Central Africa. It's the third poorest country in the world. Third poorest country in the world. Growing up at your age, it was very difficult. I didn't have enough food. I didn't have clean water. I know today's focus is I was thirsty. You gave me something to drink. And I try not to focus of I try not to focus on what went wrong when I was growing up, but what did I learn from it? And that's the reason why I want to encourage you, and I'm very proud of you for what you're doing. I guarantee you that God is very proud of you. Your parents are very proud of you. Your teachers are very proud of you. You are obeying God's words by understanding that there are kids out there don't have much. So what can we do about it? We are very blessed. You are very blessed. I didn't even have to open the fridge to find out what's in the fridge because I didn't have a fridge. I wore one pair of shoes growing up until it doesn't fit anymore. I walked barefoot for years. I didn't have enough clothes. They didn't even fit me. I went to bed hungry many nights. Sometimes I went days without food. What's important about this challenge, it's not just doing it. It's showing that you appreciate what you have. How do you appreciate what you have? You don't just say thank you. You show it in action. How do you show in action? First thing you do, you don't waste what you have. You have so much blessing. Take good care of what you have. My kids knows that. If, a tr if food goes in the trash, things don't go very well with me. Sometimes I lose it. Did you know every day, nearly 8,000 children in the entire world, 8,000 children in the entire world, lose their life because of starvation. They don't have food. Three million children your age lose their life because they don't have food. Again, how do you show that you appreciate 
Have action. Take good care of what you have. Serve yourself what you can finish. Don't throw in the trash. Every time you throw that food in the trash, remember, there's a kid your age, the minute you throw in the trash, that lose their life because they don't have food. Take good care of what you have. You, have, you are so blessed. You have so many choices. Take good care of your shoes. Take, take good care of your clothes. Show that you care. Pray for those who don't have. Maybe do something different this Christmas. Remember, there's a need and a want. Do you need all those pair of shoes? This Christmas, do you need two more pairs of Jordans? Or LeBron's? Let me challenge you. Tell your parents that can I take that money and give to the kids I'm praying for that you're wearing it today? Think about it. You'll be making a difference. And God, your parents, your teacher will be very proud of you. This morning, I'm about to finish. I only have five minutes. This morning, I pray. I ask God, God, put a message in my heart. I want to... I want to make a difference with these five minutes I have a talk. And guess what? God put a message in my heart. And it's about middle school. How many middle school are in here? I beg you for the next few seconds to look me in the eye and pay attention to me. When I was your age, at 13 years old, I became a refugee. Some of you understand that. A refugee is you've been forced to leave your country because it's unsafe. So I ended up going in the Congo, which is a neighboring country. I was only 13 years old. I was forced to leave my parents, leave my house, leave my siblings, and go in a strange country and become a refugee. I remember that one time I went three days without food. I didn't have medicine when I was sick. And forget about food and drink and emotionally, mentally, physically. I was suffering, I was in pain. And I remember some, one night I was praying, I spent hours praying, but I was only in tears because I didn't have words to express my pain. Again, 13 years old. So this is when I want you to pay attention to me, all the middle school. There are two things that saved my life. Two things. Number one, I gave my life to Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I work hard to keep my faith healthy. Remember, you don't work hard for salvation. It's grace, it's free. But you do work hard to keep that faith healthy. That's what I did as a teenager. I was involved in church. I was part of the youth group. I prayed daily. I read my Bible. And I applied the word of God in my life during that time. Number two that saved me was my father's word of wisdom. My father told me, any action you do in your life, you are planting a seed. If you plant an orange, you will always get an orange. You will never get an apple. And my father told me, plant the good seed in your life, and good things will happen to you. And I plant good seed when I was a refugee at 13 years old. I always obey my parents, which were not with me, but whoever was helping me, I was obedient. When I get back to school at that time, I work hard in school. I listen to my teacher. I try to be a role model as a teenager. And those two things saved my life. My faith in Christ and planting a good seed in my life. I challenge you, all middle schooler, think about giving your life to Christ. If you give your life to Christ, you work on your faith, it will save your future and your life. Secondly, plant a good seed. Be a role model 
to your sibling, your classmate. Listen to your parents. Please, please, find five minutes instead of locking yourself in the bedroom. Put the tablet down. Put the iPhone down. Sit down with your parents. Show them how much you appreciate. Tell them thank you for so many blessings you have. Being sent to a Christian school, having food, having shelter, having clothes. Appreciate, talk to them, use your word. It will mean the word to them. Don't talk behind your friend's back. Be kind. Be a role model. Be an example to your siblings. If you plant good seeds and you stay in good faith, you have a better future. Again, thank you so much for this opportunity. I encourage you to keep it up. Pray for those kids you're wearing around your, your neck. And be grateful in action. Show it. Don't just say it, but show it. And make a difference this Christmas. Thank you so much for the opportunity. God bless you.